Assalamu alaikum babe. <laughs> so we're in the 8 series today. Just behind me, around the corner, is the Iranian embassy. The real magic is in this box. We're just two Asian lads from Birmingham. You wanna go to Pakistan? La la, please. Down your now. <laughs> Basically, we'll be going into the car we're supposed to trade. Armor, we're having big jobs. Put the camera away. The glamping tent. Is it a glamping tent? You know, when you have a bad day in work, this is a bad thing. <sighs> I need to get this visa sorted, otherwise, I'm gonna have to cancel my car name. BMW M Sport. Just call me Pete Faris. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, subhanallah, brother. Sadly, people, welcome back to KBT Weekly, episode 28. Sorry, start again. Amr, no signal. Welcome back to KBT Weekly, episode 29. Ain't nobody else gonna pick that up. These boys will just, they'll walk over it. Anyway, welcome back to KBT Weekly, episode 29, people. It's Monday, and like every other Monday, it's absolutely hectic. Printing the orders, getting the orders out the door, I've had a customer drop off a motorbike seat, so let's go and check that out. I'm gonna speed this up. Postman's been around early today. The box here as well. Ulfers, an awful delivery. So as I mentioned, one of my customers has bought in this. So it's not a motorbike seat, it's a quad bike seat. So, uh, Asalaamu Alaikum. Ashik Bhai, how are you? So you've all met Ashik Bhai before from Sunna Musk. I'll let him introduce himself again. I'm Ashikul Rahman, I'm an Imam and Khatib in, in London. I'm also part of the Sunnah Mas family. Nice to be here. I just came to visit our brother Faris. Came to Birmingham for another purpose, but I have to visit Faris. It's quite a simple job, quite a straightforward job. Just take this cover off and yeah, we'll recover it with some vinyl. We'll get this sent into Stanley. So it's another job in the pipeline. But as I mentioned last week, we do need to get the previous jobs finished before we do leave. I still. I'm fighting with the Iranian embassy to actually try and get hold of somebody at the Iranian embassy. I don't want to say the trip's on hold because I just don't want to believe it. But we can't go anywhere until we get approval from the Iranians. After speaking to several friends and family, I think the other route that I mentioned through Russia and all the stands. Bear in mind, the, this journey currently is probably like four to 5,000 miles. If we go that way, we're adding an extra 4,000 miles. So in total, we'll be doing like 8,000 miles and it's just not feasible at all. So whatever Allah has planned for us, it is what it is. It's not the end of the world if we don't go, uh, although it'd be a bit of a bummer. So I just want to quickly touch on this material, a helmet book from Hessian. It's a 91 centimeter wide. We also do this in a 30 centimeter wide. This fabric is ideal for metal mounting, for making shapes with fabric. Can also be used for power mitts, but it does need cutting down. Moving on from that, we have another delivery come through. And I do believe this is the Velcro. So we ordered some Velcro for stock. So Velcro comes double-sided. Let me just take this out before I poke myself with it. So I've already poked myself with it. Even though I said I'm not going to poke myself with it. Uh, do this with a camera armor, like, you know, like... Oh, Ahmed, what's happened to you, bruv? Well, there's nothing left of you, brother. Let me blow you back up. <laughs> so that's the 25 mil, and then we also have the 50 mil. I'm just gonna go out and get some lunch. Mashallah, I see these guys more than I see my own friends, you know that? I see Abid more than I see you, Ahmed. So we're here in Brother Shahi's famous street food with Brother Faris. He said he's gonna feed me the best uh, kebabs in um, that I've ever tasted. So let's see how this goes. Inshallah. I'm looking forward to the food. You're my guest of honor today <laughs> in your own vlog. <laughs> how you feeling, man? Alhamdulillah. You were just complain. telling me about this crazy trip to Pakistan. Are you serious? For the last three vlogs, all I have spoken about is Pakistan, Pakistan, Pakistan. Oh, so everyone knows about this. Are you going to add like any sort of, sort of uh, something like a meaningful feature, like a charity or like a fundraiser or something to, um, I was work. I was with some brothers from Islamic Relief just uh, a couple of weeks ago. We done a fundraiser for them in our mosque. They were telling me how by the end of the winter, more than half of the kids in Afghanistan 
are going to be malnourished. They're going to be basically severely ill. What about the kids here? If someone even builds or makes like a youth centre or a charity which is looking at these kind of problems, working with them people, a lot of these kids just need a hug, man. Yeah. They're actually lonely. They're sad. They come from destroyed families. They were all babies and kids at one point. So if you can rehabilitate them, you know, give them the kind of environment that can be around good people, good mentorship, and that again, you can, someone can set up a charity, because what, what, what it's come down to now in the UK, because a, a while back, they used to give a lot of funding for youth clubs and youth activities, but now it's like everyone's being left, every community is being left to do it themselves. There's 101 charities out there, you know, because every month, you know, Green Lane Masjid, okay, HRF, Islamic Relief, Salam Charity, all these different charities, they're all working in these international uh, sectors but nobody's doing anything locally here the, there are problems there are severe problems but we can clearly see that obviously the disparity is quite a lot more severe over there people have literally been bombed out of their homes in their countries oh, yeah. so that's why i think there's a lot more focus there course, whereas yeah. here we, we're in the uk there's a lot of money here mm. there are actually responsible people for each sector you know the, the councils have a responsibility to also to, to to cater for to provide we have a good police system good education system and yet we have problems. Yes, some people fell through the system and it didn't work out. But if someone is passionate about this kind of work, I think definitely because if you can build a character, a person, uh, change their life around, that person may help another hundred, exactly. another thousand people. I think if that's something you're passionate about, Faris, but you can, you're the man that can do it. You can do it. You can, you can literally get a team together who have, who have ideas, young people, youth workers, and say, you know what? I want to do something for my community. Yeah. Let's set something up. You can call some of your friends up and say, you know what? There's a project I want to work on. Alhamdulillah, Allah's giving you money, understanding. Let's chip in together. Let's tie it off. We can set up a charity. People can also get involved. Yeah. This is definitely needed, man. No, if you can change definitely. one person's life, then yeah. you're changing hundreds of people's lives by extension. There are a lot of mosques. There's a lot of madrasas. But they're not, often, they're not appealing to the people that need the most help. Yeah. The guy that's in the mosque doesn't really need the dawah that much. Yeah. It's the guy that's never seen the mosque walking in the past, past five years. Yeah. You know, it's the guy that's living next door to the mosque, or walking past the mosque. But with the younger generation, new imams, sort of new graduates, modern scholars in a positive way, if you, if you like, you know, things will change, I think. But we need to boost it with that, with that, with those kind of youth activities, youth centers, you know, for even people that are not of, of any faith, even, you know. Yeah. If you have a youth project, that's for everybody, not just for Muslims. Yeah. You know, because at the end of the day, we're here to serve humanity. You know, there's a hadith that says khairun nas and thawmin nas The most beneficial, the most sorry, the best of people Are those who are most beneficial to other people mm. Beneficial, he hasn't specified benefit in what, mm. what way, yeah. yeah So you can benefit anybody, Muslim, non-Muslim, it doesn't matter you, yeah. You'll be the best of people according to, you know, in the sight of Allah And the Prophet Sallallahu he didn't just come to Arabs Or Asians or Pakistanis or Mongolis Or just Muslims even Allah says, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ That you've been sent as a mercy to all of the worlds. So Not just... <laughs> exactly. Yeah. His video was sent to the jinn kind, bro. Yeah. Even the jinns are receiving the da'wah of the Prophet wow. So imagine human beings, they're a bit misguided, yes. But, you know, that's a part of our project. May Inshallah. Allah give us understanding, man. Inshallah. Amen. 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 So my name's Jack Slater and I'm a student at BCU, or Birmingham City University. And um, I've been coming to KBT for at least think five years I think um, which isn't so bad um, I'm surprised these guys have put up with me for this long so I think one of the first projects I did with you guys was um, it was for a it was when I was at college I also did a project about circular um, objects as well so it was like creating this outdoor um, unique um, jacket really which is really really cool and one of my favorite pieces and and then recently I've been using um, KBT to um, for my university project um, I study costume and design so um, I've done a bit of fashion and a bit of costume but for my main degree I'm doing costume so Jack's having today uh, some white scuba and he's buying some more calico. We will leave a link in the description below with more information regarding the calico. The scuba, again, it's a fashion item for clothes, etc., as well as various other uses. What's going on? What's going on? Just uh, been busy, like, you know, doing work. I've got to do some quilting. I've got to go and change one of the machines. 125 meters of quilting I've got to do for a customer. So 
but it's a different design. It's a straight line. This design here, see this? Straight lines, easy design. So I'm just gonna put that on the machine now, on a denim. I gotta change the design. So I gotta strip the machine now and change the design. Rethread it. And then uh, away we go. When the days go bad, yeah, that's what happens. I was putting the pipe. It's ready for the machine to put it. So it's 160 meter. I was happy, he said, all right then. This one come out. Now this one gonna take long time. He's got inside like pipe there is broken. If I cut this one here, so you know the customer will lose his cloth. Yeah, one minute. You will lose the cloth. So I just want to find a way how to take it out. So I have to hammer it slow, slow and break inside to take it out. It's gonna take, <laughs> bro, <it's laughs> that's what happens. You know, when you have a bad day in work, this is the bad thing. Swamos.com for all your oud fragrances, etc. I'm sure you guys are well versed with who they are. They've been in my vlogs from day one, basically. This is coming up to three. I'm gonna go log into my meeting and then I'll catch you guys a little later on. Right, you join me at my desk. It's 10 minutes to six. I'm gonna to leave today here. We've got early start tomorrow. We're gonna to head down into London. We're gonna to go to the Iranian embassy first thing in the morning. We should leave here around about eight to be outside the embassy doors for about half nine. I need to get this visa sorted, otherwise I'm gonna to have to cancel my carne. There's been many people who have tried to cross the Turkey-Iranian border. There's actually some guys currently who went from, I believe, Bradford or Manchester on some motorbikes and they're stuck in Turkey at the moment because they couldn't get a visa. I don't know. I'm not feeling too positive about it right now. I've been trying to get hold of the Iranian embassy for the last God knows how many days and they just do not seem to want to answer the phone. I'm not sure exactly why they've got a phone because they don't answer it. Please enter extension number. Please enter extension number. I don't have an extension number to give you. So what am I supposed to dial? Anyway, it is what it is. Some things are out of our control. So yeah, we'll see you in the morning, inshallah. Top of the morning to you guys and you join us today in central London. Just behind me, round the corner, is the Iranian embassy. I said to Armour, we're not filming outside there because, you know what I mean, I don't want to be ruffling any feathers. But needless to say, obviously, we're not here to cause any trouble. But we're going to just pop in, see if we can get some sort of response from them guys about our application that we put in about three weeks ago. If you have been watching my vlogs previously, you'll know we applied for our visas about three weeks ago and we still haven't had a response. So we've actually drove all the way to London and we're here at the consulate and I'll let you guys know how we get on. We're not going to take the camera in obviously, we're going to leave that in the car but let's go through. So the situation is we've just come out of the embassy. Now I wish I had better news to tell you. Unfortunately the situation as it stands, the situation as it stands due to the Omricon virus, this new strain of coronavirus, uh, they've actually closed the borders so there's no foreign travel especially by road through turkey or any of the other corresponding borders one good thing has come out of it he has checked our passports and he has put a what he called a tick against our passport numbers to say that as soon as things change which is hopefully in the very near future um, our visas have gone through basically so all that's left is for the actual borders to open. He did say that he could actually issue the visa now, but it'd be pointless because we wouldn't be allowed to cross over. So that's the reason why it's been waiting for verification for the last couple of weeks. Unfortunately, that most likely means that we're gonna to have to put a hold on our trip. So we're not actually gonna be leaving around the 18th. Well, we don't know yet. We'll see what happens. Inshallah, we do. We'd rather stay where we are and just wait for them to issue the visa. As soon as the visa is issued, we can go. We literally will pack our bags and we'll leave the following day. 
But right now, as it stands, we're going to have to postpone our journey. Allah is the best of planners, and there must be a reason why we're not allowed to go right now. When things don't happen smoothly and you get roadblocks like this, uh, Allah always has a better plan for you, so, you know, it is a bit of a bummer. So, Nuri did say, he's given me his direct number, he said call me on Friday and I'll let you know if there's any further updates. Pointless trip down here. But, let's go get some food, because it is lunchtime, and hopefully we should be back for about 4 o'clock, so at least we can get a couple of hours working. Where are we eating, Omar? It's lunchtime, people. We're just popping into Wingstop quickly. We tried it once in Birmingham, but... I don't know, maybe they're teething issues, but we'll see what this one's saying. So just ordered, I'll let you know when it comes, what we've ordered and how it tastes. We're just two Asian lads from Birmingham. We want to go to Pakistan. La la, please, down your now. <laughs> oh, hello. Right. Quickly, because I'm starving. Our food's arrived. What is this called? We've got some tenders with barbecue sauce. Uh, I've got a barbecue burger and Armour's got a classic. Looks delicious, man. Can't wait to dig in. We'll let you know how it is once we finish. It does look fire still. Alright, quick verdict on the food. I'll give it a solid 9 out of 10. The burger with the barbecue sauce was absolutely banging. And the tenders, again, we had them in the original sauce. They were just as nice as well. So solid 9 out of 10 for Wingstop. We'll give the Iranian Embassy a 5 out of 10 for now. Because they were semi-helpful. But we didn't get what we come for. We just hit the M40, so we'll catch you guys when we're back at KBC. Back to KBT, it's just gone half five, so quickly gonna go in and see what's happening, see what the boys are up to and how the day's been. We just had a delivery of some samples of some new lines that we're thinking of bringing in. So we've got this option here, which is a basket weave vinyl. So there's this option here as well. As I say, my dad's not very fond of it, but I feel as if this is coming back in now, this sort of damask pattern. I'm sure I have seen that in a hotel I went to recently. I think that would be ideal for wallpapers, sort of like a feature wall. So you can make a feature wall out of fabric. I think it's coming in now, putting fabric on the walls and stuff. And you've got this type here, which is like a Venetian plaster style. You know, all these different colours. So, perhaps these two. I suppose we can make headboards and stuff out of it as well. But yeah, we'll have a good think about what we're going to do. But it is coming towards the end of the day. Well, in fact, it's gone 10 past 6, so I'm doing a bit of overtime, but...
Good morning, guys. Welcome back to another day. I'm in a somewhat good mood today. I've been down at the storage yard this morning, just discussing with the electrician and the CCTV installers about where we want to put everything in terms of lighting and cameras. I drew a site map a few weeks ago, which I've handed over to them, and they're trying to get their head around what I've actually drawn. After a bit of explanation, we've managed to sort that out. But yeah, I've just come in not long ago, so I've just printed some orders. Let me just mute my ring alarm, which always seems to be going off. In other good news, I had a phone call from the guys downstairs in the warehouse to say I've had a delivery come through. Now, I do believe, because I did get a text message in the morning from Apple to say that our laptop has finally arrived, the one that we ordered about two months ago. We can do the official unboxing of the Apple MacBook Pro M1 Max chip. Armour makes sure to tell me to emphasise the M1 Max chip. I ain't got a clue what that means, but apparently it's like supersonic flight. It's like an M5 competition. It's sort of like a Ferrari. We did initially buy that for our trip to Pakistan, but as you all know. But hold that line, let me just uh, ring Nadil. Get him to bring that up for us. Yeah, hi Nadil. Can you bring them boxes up for me, please? What's up guys, the laptop's finally here. Thank you very much, sir. Cheers. So big thank you to Nadil for bringing that up. You can carry it up, you need to lose weight. I'm sure you'll lose a few pounds carrying that box up. Carry that box up the stairs, it'll do you some good. Do your word of good. But I've got a lot of images for him to take. And you've completely overtaken the bloke. Cappuccino! Have you seen that belt we got? BMW M Sport seat belt. So guys, Wednesday morning at KBT. Currently working on today's shorts part. 13 I believe so I'm also doing the YouTube cinematics I hope you guys are enjoying that how did I end up here eh? you ass armor sorry guys I gotta be sidetracked as you know work comes first we've got to make money to spend money just took this payment okay all right calm down having a spasm that thing I want to paint my dad's weights as well so I'm gonna sand them down for him and I'm gonna, I'm gonna spray them with a spray. He uses them as weights, trains while he's working. He picks the call up with one hand and he's training with the other hand and he'll swap. So we've had a bunch of pillows as well come through. This is one that we completed. So as you can see, it's finishing a lovely plush velvet. It's a very popular fabric that. It's this material here. So this is the marble design. As you can see, it has a bit of a marble texture. One, two, three, four, five. Now this is a two inch foam. It's not something that we keep in stock, but we keep in our other warehouse. The customer requested for this specific foam, so we went and got it picked up. Well, you've all seen the high visibility fleece, which I had wrapped around me in last week's vlog. We do the same high vis finish in the vinyl range. So this is the yellow. So this is ideal for bicycle seats. You just eat bikes, Uber eat bikes. Why am I relating it to food armor ass? Because obviously, can't it be in a local bike? But yes, we do this in a range of four different colors. We do it in a high-vis yellow, we do it in a high-vis orange, we do it in a high-vis green and pink. So I just had Auntie Kuldeep come in. She wants to recover some chairs. So she's chosen her two fabrics. I've done this. Uh it's a panel which I've quilted myself and I've done the patchwork here and I need a backing for it. See, I did the outline. Wow. It's all done by hand. And I bought this material from you. Yeah, the one. And I bought yeah. this one, the other one from you as well. Yeah. And uh, this was panel from NEC. This oh, is the no chair problem. that I, I want to cover. No, the, this one for the chair, I made a template first. Last night I did a cut the template and I had some rough material. Mm. So I stitched that one, put it on the cover and it looked fine. So now that's why I'm coming to buy it, that uh, I won't waste this material. Right, so guys, we finally managed to get back to my desk. So let's start unboxing. So first and foremost, I believe this is the Magic Mouse. I'm going to be using this Ulfa rotary cutter, 
which is not the correct cutter because we should be using the Stanley blade, but this is all I have, like so. Open that up. There we go. There, there, there. All right, there we go. So, first up, we have the Apple Magic Mouse. The real magic is in this box. Bismillah. So, there we have it, guys. The MacBook Pro. Which has taken about two months to get to us but it's finally here let's talk about the specification that we've gone for so it's a macbook pro 16 inch i believe it comes with a standard one terabyte we upgraded it to a two terabyte we upgraded the um what else do we upgrade so just to put things into perspective we do have an apple imac pro that has 128 gb ram so obviously this is half that but the biggest difference is the new chip that's in this. The iMac Pro uses an Intel chip, and this uses Apple's very own latest M1 Max chip, which I have read a fair few reviews on, and so has Armour. Obviously, Armour knows a lot more about these things than I do. And we purely bought this for our international trips. When we're in the UK, we can edit at home. Well, when I say we, Armour can edit at home. Absolutely fine on his iMac. But, you know, the few trips that we have done abroad, uh, when we went to the Nürburgring, when we went to Barcelona, we were having to take the iMac with us because the biggest thing that I believe in, the biggest thing that my father and Saj have taught me is consistency. We never lack on consistency. A video must hit the screens on Sunday and at 8 p.m. We literally, and I remember this clearly, right? Like yesterday, we were in Germany. We were in our hotel in the Nürburgring. We filmed on Sunday because the track was closed the previous day when we were supposed to be filming. We filmed and edited literally hours before the 8 p.m. scheduled time. And it was around about, I think it was around about 6 p.m. when Armour finally finished the edit. But Alhamdulillah, Allah was on our side. We managed to get it done somehow. I don't know. I don't know how. Honestly, I've seen some of the upload times when we're here in the UK and it's like four, five, six hours it takes to encode and upload. But Alhamdulillah, our mother's du'as, Allah was on our side that day. Anyway, there's a lot of du'a talking going on here. Just call me Pete Faris. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, subhanallah, brother. Let's finally get it open. Let's see what the hype is about. Hopefully, inshallah, it should make our life a lot easier when we go on our international trips. Also, guys, I've ordered another GoPro, the Hero 10, the latest one. Again, that was for our Pakistan trip, which I have to keep repeating. Is on hold currently until the Iranians decide to open their borders with the Turks. So yeah, so that's arriving tomorrow. So we'll do the official unboxing of the GoPro Hero 10. Feels good, doesn't it, to unbox? You know, when you got something new and it's like, you know, I love technology and I and I love new things. You know, it is a USB-C, so it's a USB-C charging cable. So I can actually charge this in my car, which is good. And then we have some information. Nobody ever reads that stuff. Plug. What on earth is this thing? Right, Bismillah. So, we'll just take this protective sheet off. And there you have it, guys. Brand new. Apple MacBook Pro. This is uh, an order where we cut some hessian for a customer and uh, he needs to go out because the uh, pallet is going out. The driver's just been in and I've told him to go around the block. So we just need to pack this. It is, it is. <laughs> you know this one, you picked it up, that's what happens. Bro. And you know when you get it in your neck, you'll be itchy. For 
flower wrapping. So this is a company that uh, wraps flowers. It's one of our good customers. A lot of top-end floral shops use this. Keeps the flowers fresh. So just when you think the day is finished, the Hessian pallet, which we packed earlier, the driver's turned up. He's lucky because I was about to put the shutter down. Let's get this out the door and get it to the customer for tomorrow. You know we are here piloting everything. Aeroplanes, bolts, forklifts, the lot. Right, that pallet has been loaded into the truck and it will be delivered to the garden centre tomorrow. The Hessian goes over the plants and he stops any of the plants from frosting over, etc. It's been a long, productive day. As always, you're watching me, Faris, KBT Weekly, Hong Kong, but the horn don't work. Thank you to everyone who ever watched this. Good night, see you on Thursday morning. Assalamu alaikum, babe. <laughs>
Yeah, great timing, everybody. Great timing. Mm. Anyway, I need to concentrate on this. Because yesterday, you were disturbing me, Armour. And I was making mistakes. Right, guys, we've got some new webbing as well, which I want to talk to you guys about. Right, that's that done. Right, I finally finished my emails. It is coming towards the end of the day. Unfortunately, we didn't get much filming done today. Let me take a sip of my juice because I am chaffed. Is it chaffed? Chapped. Chapped. Sorry, chapped. Ah. Right. It's time. We have some more tools arrived. Some more tools for the trade. For KBT Media. And today, it's the official unboxing of the GoPro Hero 10. So, we've just had this delivered. Well, it came this morning, but it was put on my desk just now. We already have a GoPro, which is the Hero 9, which we only bought a few months ago. But like anything these days, in terms of technology, things move so fast. And now, I'm not sure what has improved on this, but it is the latest model. Now, we never bought it because it's the latest model. We just bought it purely because we needed two. Uh, one for inside the car, and I wanted to stick one on the outside of the car. Just when we're driving through some mountainous ranges and things like that. So, let's get it opened and see what the hype's about. Sony A7S III batteries go missing, SD cards go missing, I don't know, I think Armour eats a man on it. So we've got another two batteries, so we've already got two batteries which are currently on charge. So I believe they are the same, same thing. It's basically stick on the side of the car, isn't it? Do you get me? And then we also have whatever this thing is. So we'll pull out the uh, the tools first. It's a truncheon, yeah. Wah, 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 wah. Paperwork, which we'll never read in our life. Charging cable. And then here we have the GoPro itself. There we go, guys. It's the Hero 10. Dun, dun, dun. Just looks exactly the same as the Hero 9. There's absolutely no difference other than it says 9 on the side of this and it says 10 on the side of this. It has a 23 megapixel camera. It films in 5.3, 60 FPS. Or at 4K, 120 FPS. Is that pretty good, isn't it? Armour's eyes lit up there like uh, the sunshine. And it's uh, waterproof up to 10 meters just in case uh, we take the wrong turn and we end up like that Bugatti in a river. Stuck for Allah. Hopefully, inshallah, that doesn't happen to us. And it has a GP2 processor, which I have no idea what that means. Blah, blah, blah. Eight times slow mo. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Sounds fantastic. You want wide angle. So we want it 4K. We're going to leave today there. We'll see you, as always, back tomorrow for Juma. So, we're filming on the GoPro today. It's just me I and Saj that, in the office. That, I think that network cable don't work. And... I think that point don't work. This is the printer doesn't work. Gaffer, how's it going? You all right? It's going okay, yeah. Yeah, everything cool? Yeah, it's all right. What are you holding uh, there? What's that it's a What's GoPro? It's yeah. a GoPro, Clive. That's, a, that's a, for the um, bicycles, isn't it? Clive's here as well, everybody. <laughs> everybody give him a wave. Clive. <laughs> Say hello to KBT Weekly. <laughs> hello KBT Weekly. So what are you doing here today, Clive? Well, I can't think of a bill, but... <laughs> you came for we'll a bill, but... Bill. Eh? We'll hide he's his bill. Eh? He's come for a bill, but he's given, we've given him more jobs to do. He's looking for a bill, and Bill's uh, not here, eh? Yeah, sorry, we don't know who Bill is. <laughs> but anyway... This one here, Clive, let me show you. So Clive fitted his data points for us, but... Uh, one has magically uh, fallen through. 
Is it a user error, Clive? Yes. So this is where the magic happens. So what is this, Clive? Talk to us. Huh? This what is are we looking at? This is the data switch. It's a data switch, right? Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of cables coming off that. There is a lot of points. So what are they for? <laughs> Yeah, all, your, all your different points, printers, computers, telephones, you name it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Looks... Uh, it's all fiber optic. So what are you doing there, Gaffer? Yeah. Uh, I've just got some uh, webbing straps here. On the side release buckle here. Clips in there. It's the webbing. And What's that for? That's a shoulder pad. When it goes on your shoulder like that. You know, when you've got a laptop or something like that. Oh yeah. Or a bag. Shoulder. Available in about 25 colours. Well, it's available in uh, lots of colours. You tell us what colour you need and we'll get it for you. And if you need um, a bespoke colour, we can even make that for you as well. And we've also got these seatbelt buckles, 25mm seatbelt buckles. This is a 25mm seatbelt buckle. So what happens with that is that goes around that like that. It goes in there like that. And then this gets obviously stitched onto that or fixed, whichever way you want to fix it. And that bolts to the surface of the bolt. So is that how the seat belt works? That's basically how the seat belt works. This is you have on on the seat belt you have one of these on one end and the other side you have it in the actual ratchet with a buckle on it which actually clips into this slot. But this is the other side of the seat belt which you don't normally see, it's normally hidden down by the seat somewhere. What's happened, Clive? <laughs> These have been pushed in that far, right? Yeah. They've actually damaged the plugs. Pushed into where? Into the sockets. So that one's jammed in there now. That one, because it's gone too far. That clip, that clip there, right? It's supposed to remain outside. Right. So, so, so now, there's nothing, it's actually damaged the plug. Yeah, but maybe so the... Changing. Yeah, but maybe the, uh, the plug's fallen through. No, the whole lot's um, come apart. Has it? Yeah. This man promised me six months ago to put a duster door on. <laughs> but he only takes on big jobs. He don't like doing small jobs. No, Any Clive? Your uncle's the one to blame. Hey, which one? Uh, I'll see you change all the lights down at Fort Story. Yeah, that's, that's your uncle, mate. Hey? That's your uncle. He's got, he's got, he's got you at the back. It's all, it's all damaged. Yeah, and the, the new lights look nice, you know, Clive. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Hey? They do. Proper street lights, yeah. They've come out nice, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. I think I might put them down at Cray Lee. Are you ready? Are you ready? How much you pay for them, bro? They come as a term. Depends on what you buy, because I can get the cost down depending on what you buy. What you've got is a floodlight. Yeah. These are street lights. They're different. What's the difference? This pushes the light down. Is it? Yeah, a floodlight pushes the light out. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Anyway. Yep. We'll let you get on. Okay. Welcome back, it's Friday, it's Juma, and you join us today in the office. What I have in my hand is something that we spoke about yesterday. It's a new line that we're running and it is a genuine OEM M Sport BMW seatbelt webbing. So the biggest difference over a normal seatbelt is clear cut. You've got the BMW stripe going through the actual belt. Now, looking at my car, the M5, this is the exact same seatbelt that is in my car. So it's something that we recently started doing and we're still in the process of setting it up. Basically, we'll be going into the car reupholstery trade. I'm just in talks with a few people at the moment, people in the relevant trade. So somebody for the headliner, somebody for the seating, somebody for the belts, steering wheels, dashboards, etc. You name it, we're going to get into it all. We do have a unit next door, which is rented out. Once we're ready to start and we've got things in place, we're going to take over that unit. We're not turning it into a car channel, but it's a subsidiary of what we're actually doing at the moment. So this is a shade card which Saj made earlier. That was a bit of a tongue twister. So we'll start with the high visibility seat belt, which is finished in a high vis yellow. Next up is the yellow, which is a plain yellow. Then we have an orange, we have a wine, we have a beige, we have olive green, grey, black, royal blue, navy blue. I was thinking about putting this red seat belt in my M5. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you guys think. As always, we will leave a link in the description below for all of these items. Do go and check it out. Now, if you are local to Birmingham and you do want that job done, or you're willing to travel to Birmingham, if you haven't got anybody locally who can do that for you, we can get it done for you. As I just mentioned, 
it is something that we're going into so guys just behind me here what we have is a foam model version of a moped and we've been given the task to reupholster this this is for a local moped retail shop this is not something that we've done nor is this but we're going to take it off and we're going to recover this whole thing with some fabric we're going to get onto that as soon as we get a chance to breathe because right now we are buried in jobs so we have the accompanying helmet to go with the moped again it's made out of foam as you can see just there the visor is made out of some sort of plastic and then it has this vinyl cover being put over it they've asked us to redo it and again we'll get onto that as soon as we get a chance i actually did quite enjoy uh, design and technology in school i've always been a hands-on type of person i like to take things apart and then put them back together you know like dismantling the engine on a car i mean i wouldn't go that far you all know my mate Hamza, Tia Hamza on YouTube, he reviews cars. He's a very hands-on guy when it comes to his cars. I mean, it's very interesting to see some of the things that he does. Fair play to him, it's not like he's been a mechanic all his life, you know, he's learning every day. If you want to watch any car reviews or any of my cars being reviewed, make sure you go and check out Sir Tia Hamza. So, we're in the 8 Series today, I've dropped off the M5 to BMW, they're servicing it, did need a service regardless, I think it is from brake pad, but we'll see anyway, I'm still waiting for a call from them, but they've given me this lovely 8 Series, the 840i, you can just imagine how nice the M8 Grand Coupe would be, very comfortable, and when they say Grand Coupe, it's a Grand Cruiser, I mean this is the type of car you would actually want to go to, you know, Pakistan in or wherever else you want to go, I mean there's something about it, it just feels low to the ground, very chunky seats large chunky seats you know for someone my size does uh, does wonders it's a BMW 8 series 840i M Sport we are running late I've got to go pick up some fabric hence a checkbook it is lunchtime and it is Juma so we always like to get something juicy on Juma uh, what are we have for lunch today Gaffer anyway so um, change of plan we're not going Big John's we're going to Do and Bun because Saj wants a particular fish burger so, off we go to Do and Bun. I just thought I'd quickly tell you, the plans changed yet again. Well, should I say, or what would better describe it, the plans got reverted back to the original plan of going to Big John's, so... Armour, we're having Big John's, put the camera away. I'm about to eat without you. Right, so one of the contractors that we work with has just bought in this lamping tent. Is it a glamping tent? As you can see, it's seen better days. We're going to remake it and then we're actually going to line the inside of it, drape some fabric on the inside. This was actually up at the light show when yeah. we went to Warwick. It's the same company. We could take one on our trip down to Pakistan. But yeah, where are we going to put the bloody thing? It's bigger than the car. <laughs> I know you can fold it down, but yeah, I'm sure it'll take up too much room in the boot. You can have one. Is it because I've been a good boy this week? Yeah, you've been a good boy. You can have one. Thank you. You have in our suites? And we give one to the cameraman. Right guys, we've just locked up. So that means it is the end of another weekly. Thanks for watching episode 29. Do catch up on my previous episodes if you haven't already. And as always, I'm Faris. This is KBT. That's my car and I'm going home. Good night.